Somebody's going to get one. It might as well be me. I dare you to say that. If somebody's going to get a miracle tonight, it might as well be me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the sweetness of the Holy Ghost in this place. I've felt it all day, sensed it all day. Everybody raise your hand and say, Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, you're the most welcome guest. You're the most welcome. This is your home. You're always welcome here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, if you will. <clears throat> We're talking about the order in, of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11. God has an order. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas said, how are we going to get there? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I don't know why we choose to believe lies rather than the truth. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's our way to heaven. He's all truth. He is truth. Hallelujah. Say, worry, get out of my mind. Truth is, you've been there, but you've got to go. You've got to leave. I dismiss you. Get out of my mind. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 13, no, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 <laughs> Corinthians 11, 34. If any man hunger, let him eat at home that you may not, that, that you come not together unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come. Everybody say God's order. God's order. He's going to set. He's going to set it in in order in God's government. In and and God give you know the fivefold ministry. It's it's to bring order to this earth. There's a disorder here now, but He wants order in our lives. One day He'll set up His kingdom, and there'll be complete order here. He'll rule and reign with a rod of iron. We'll rule and reign with Him. And it will be complete order. But right now, he has a kingdom here. And, and we're his kingdom children. We're, in, we're under his government. He wants order. He wants his order in our life. 1 Corinthians 2. It is a process. Order is a process. When I first got saved, I didn't know too much. I didn't have to know much to get saved. But I had to grow. Anything that doesn't grow wilts. I had to grow. We've got to grow. The, 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 the way that the Lord wants to manifest himself on this earth, he wants to do it through us. He has a purpose for every one of us. And there is a process there that brings us into his order. 1 Corinthians 2, verse... I'm going to verse, I love this, verse 9. I'm going to verse 9 because they read this a lot in funerals and they don't read the rest of it. But, it is, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And people say, well, it's written, you know, I have not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man the things... But it goes on in verse 10, it says, but, a conjunction, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. So there is a process in our lives when we grow in the Lord that God's order becomes, it begins to 
uh, permeate every part of our mind, every part of our life. It affects our body. Our spirit grows stronger. God's order begins to come in. If, if God's order doesn't, become, doesn't begin to enter into your life and grow, you're going backwards and not forward. I hate to see somebody that progressive so far and then backs up. The devil will try every trick he can to discourage you and defeat you and get you to back up. Don't go through that process of going around the mountain and around the mountain. Let God do what he wants to do in you. Even if you have to go through hell to get there, God will cause the flame not to burn you. Come on. What you're going through, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? (laughs) Just having something burn off of me, that's all. 1 Corinthians 2, and it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, how does God, how does the Spirit of God bring us the deep things of God? How does he bring us the revelation, the the order that God wants to put in our life? How does he bring it to us? It is a work of the Spirit and the Word. If you're in the Spirit all the time and not in the Word, you're going to blow up and blow away. If you're in the word all the time, you become, you're going to become a self-righteous, judgmental, legalistic Christian. But when you mix these two together, it's like making an atomic bomb, man, when you connect them. This is how God works in our lives. And I, and I hope I get to some things I can teach you tonight. Uh, I don't know where I get there or not. But, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Everybody say Revelation. Revelation gives us understanding. Understanding gives us the promise. Hallelujah. You've got to have that. You will never know who God is unless you pray and study the word. You will never know what he has for you. You will never know your purpose. You will never have the order of God in your life that he wants that will carry you through this stuff you've got to go through to get where you're going. Because I'm going to promise you, you're going to have some battles because the devil hates you. But greater is who? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Most people, they don't don't know that. But God has revealed them unto unto us. Hallelujah. (laughs) Reveal what? The things that God has prepared for us. Hallelujah. He's prepared them, got your name on it. There, at, at the banquet table, there is a place there where you don't have to move around because when you go in, your name is right on that seat where you're supposed to sit. God knows who you are. Come on, he had a table prepared for Paul while he was out doing his thing. He turned him around. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man? You really think you know me, but you don't know me. You know a piece of me. I know a piece of you. You see the side that I want to show you. We show our best side. But when you're tired and weary and you've been out all day doing stuff and you got kids screaming and people hollering at you, there's another side that'll show up unless you've done something with that side that will cause his behavior to change. The spirit Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What gives you power over the flesh? Prayer. Prayer alone? Know the word. The word of God in prayer. You can behave at 9 o'clock at night 
just as kind and calm as you did at 8 o'clock in the morning. In God's order. Now, a lot of people don't walk there, but you can walk there. I know I've done it. Come on now. There's a calmness. Just like I, you know, was talking about this morning when, when Jesus, when they told him Lazarus was sick, he waited two more days. He was in God's order. He didn't, he wasn't anxious. How about Paul when he got thrown into prison at midnight? He didn't just get thrown into prison. He got thrown in the backside of the prison, in the inner prison where the rats was and the sewage is running down through there. He had every reason to be irritable. At midnight, when Silas had said, Paul, I thought you saw a vision. I should have never connected up with you. I should have let Barnabas stay with you. Look what you got me into. I'm a prophet. You Pentecostal preacher, you got me here in this mess. No, what did they do? What did they do at midnight? How many of y'all tired at midnight? <laughs> we didn't get in a resort in the Dominican Republic till after midnight. Everybody was still in a good mood. I was amazed. God was with us. Come on now. You can do that. You can subdue the flesh with the order of the Lord if you want to. Few shouting anyway. Amen. How many of y'all ever walked that way before? Don't raise your hand. (laughs) I've walked there before. It is possible. But you've got to do The process, you've got to pray. If you run in your mouth, you've got to be running your mouth and telling your body and your mind to shut up, that you're not going to act that way anymore. This is good preaching. For what man knoweth things, knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now, Jeanette can tell you what I'm like. She's lived with me 49 years. But I promise you, I live just as hard for God at home by myself or out by myself or with her as I do right here. Ever since God touched me, I started out good and I'm going to finish good by the grace of God. 1978, God touched my life. I felt like running a few times, but I didn't run. You can have a track record of not coming apart when troubles happen. You can do it. How can you do it? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm going to tell you, there's just as many people out there emotionally sick as they are physically sick. God is the healer. He can change you. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world. You see, they got these people now that said you can have the spirit of the world and the spirit of God, you can't do that. You can't live in the world, have one foot in the world and one foot over here with God and think that this process is going to happen because you do not have no order in your life and you're a double-minded person and a double-minded person is unstable in all of his ways. Why? Because God's not ordering his footsteps. His will... And his desires is ordering his own footsteps. And there's no order in his life. He may be with a religious crowd over here he, and he can talk. Oh, praise God. <laughs> oh, praise God. And then when he's with a cussing crowd, he's over here, he can be cussing. No order. There's no godly order in their life. What do you do when you get it out? Get it back in and keep it and hold on to it. Glory to God. There's so many religious people in America now. (laughs) They talk one way and act another. 
Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world. Look, he said, I don't want the spirit of the world. I don't want the flesh. I, you know, I'm led by the spirit, not the flesh. There's no condemnation to me. There's no judgment. Why is there no judgment? Because Jesus was judged for me. And every time I come up and I make the wrong step, I judge myself because the spirit speaks to me. The communication's open. I can hear him real good. I don't have no problem hearing God. He can talk to me real good because I listen to him. Say, I got my ears open. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear. How many know you got more than two ears up here? You got another ear in here that's hearing what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So it says, but the spirit which is of God, we might might know the things that are freely, hmm, freely given to us from God. (laughs) He freely gives them to us. Look at somebody say, there's the flow. The things that God had prepared for us. Hallelujah. I was, I was in prayer yesterday morning. And Lord, I, 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 I was in so much of God's presence. He was doing so much talking. It lasted, I think, about six hours. Hallelujah. I still feel it. God prepared a table for me, Yvonne, in the presence of all the enemies that we can't see that's out there trying to destroy us. I'm not upset about it because the order of the Lord tells me, come on now, that God has freely given to me Everything I need to overcome any attack that's coming against me. Come on now. Because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Woo! I like that sound mind. Well, my mind used to be messed up. I had to go through the process to get the order of God in my life. And even when you get it in your life, you're going to have to keep it. It's like Brother Bonner said, you've got to talk to the Lord every day. You, you, you need to get in a piece of the word and meditate on it. If you don't read a whole chapter and you just need one verse, that's all right. Just eat on it all day. Be like the old cow that's out in my pasture. They ain't out there now. Somebody's eat them. <laughs> the old cow, you know, they get that stuff. That was having an effect on their bodies. That was a natural thing for them. That's what we do. We chew on the word. We meditate on the word. We can be on our job. If we have a job, we're busy working away and everybody else is somewhere else in space and we're there thinking about, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who hath believed our report and to whom his arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before us as a tender plant and a root out of I don't want to get in these. I don't quote any scriptures. But listen, God has freely given to us. I want to tell you what God's order will do to you. God's order will give you wisdom because the devil is constantly coming to Christians and trying to bring condemnation into their mind and condemning them for not being religious <laughs> for something they did 25 years ago something they did 30 years ago something they did 5 years ago and the devil tries to come and tries to torment them with it the order of the Lord to say no hallelujah I'm forgiven you know what we did we did something that was unpardonable Every time we went to the Dominican Republic for, since 1987, we went in poor areas and we stayed in bad hotels for a long time and 
we ate bad food and we did all that. And we did it and it kind of progressively got better. The roads got better, the hotels got better and and everything got better and and then we just went, you know, and and because I moved to another side of the island, I've got friends that they 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 think I've backslid. <laughs> Cause we moved to an area that wasn't in the area where they was going to. But how many know when you got the mind of the Lord, nobody can judge you? Come on now. I'm going to show you this. Nobody can condemn you. Nobody can judge you. Only God is the judge. And if you're walking in his order, in his word, what he's ordered you to do, nobody has the right to say, what you're doing over here? Then I have no right to ask you. Come on now. Because we have the mind of the Lord. The mind of the Lord will set us free from condemnation. When I, if I miss the mark and I sin, nobody has to call me on the phone and say, Brother Potter, I hear you missed the mark this morning. <laughs> you were standing out in front of that handy mark and there was a man out there in a brand new red Camaro and you was envying it. You was coveting this, that thing. Is that right? I say, yeah, it's, it's right. But you didn't have to call me up and tell me. After he pulled off and I had the desire to get in and crank it up like Charles used to do and speed <laughs> off, I already knew I went too far. <laughs> Amen. I got order in here. See, when I... When I mess up, I fess up. Are you with me? Amen. So this time, we had the opportunity to go over the Dominican Republic and go to the beach side, Puerto Plata. Beautiful place. And we had the opportunity to stay in a resort cheaper than we could have stayed in their hotels over there and eat three meals a day. Well, I had some friends. They told me that all people did when they got into that part of missionary work that all they did was lay up in the hotels all day and pass out tracks at the beach every now and then and actually telling me I should not stay in that resort. I should stay in the worst hotel that they have there. Well, you see, I've done got the order of God in my mind. I, I don't want no religious spirit on me. I, I would have stayed in the worst hotel they had and I would have eat the worst, ate the worst food they had if that's all they had. But it ain't all they had. So you know what we did? We gained 25 pounds. <laughs> we ate a big breakfast. I won't tell on Charles, so you won't tell on me. We ate a big breakfast. We had all the food we could eat. And then we had everything we could drink. We just didn't want no alcohol. It's amazing over there. Alcohol is the word sin in Spanish. And we'd say, give us a drink without any alcohol. No alcohol. They'd give us a drink without any alcohol. It was a good drink. And, and so we ate. We didn't, and you know what we did at night? We, boy, we had between 35 and 40 services in six nights. These people work like dogs. But you know what? We got a little rest that afternoon and the anointing was so strong on our physical bodies, on us. You, 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 you can get tired and weary. It affects your anointing. So we stayed in the good place, paid it. I come back and don't apologize to nobody. Because I do not allow other people to make decisions that God makes for me. Amen. Look at somebody say, I love them. I'll kiss them. I'll blow them a kiss. And I'll say, you're probably right but in the natural, but I'm following God. I got the order of God in my life. And I not, will not allow other people to put condemnation on me. Amen. Come on now. And put guilt on me. Hallelujah. Is this helping anybody? You feel condemned. You go somewhere and enjoy yourself. <laughs> you get so religious, you feel condemned. You shouldn't do that. 
There's, there, this part of you is the most important part of you. What you do with this is the most important thing that you place in your life. But unless you call to do it and unless that's your purpose, you cannot stay in it 24 hours a day and you cannot pray 24 hours a day because you have a part of you that is physical that has to be taken care of. You have a part of you that is mental that you have to take care of. And if you don't have the order of the Lord in your life, you will push yourself to the brink where you're no good to God or anybody because you've crashed. God's order will bring a good balance. Will bring a balance in your life. You like to play golf, buddy? You ought to go do it every time you get a chance. His partner's in heaven, Jimmy Hughes. You go hunting, Rick? How many of y'all do things recreation sometimes? How many feel guilty for it? Don't. There's a part of you. God brings order in your life. There is a balance to what you do. Just do not leave this part off. You've got to have this part. You've got to have it. You've got to have that soundness in your mind. You've got to have that discipline in your mind. You've you've got to have that order that God has. You've got to have it. And you can have life and have life more abundantly. There are times that I study more than I do others. There's times when I pray more than I do others. But I let the Holy Spirit lead me into what I need to pay attention to. I've got things around the house that I need to do sometimes. And the Holy Spirit, he will show me when I can do them. You say you're crazy. I know it. I'm crazy. (laughs) I don't have my mind no more. I got it, but I got the mind of Christ. I've lost that old mind, that old nature. God will show me when to do it. I can get in this word and I can put this in my life. It brings order to every part of your life when you put God first. He will show you, he will reveal to you the things that he has prepared personally for you. Big time. You won't live that one down. Correction. You won't live that down. That place needed correction. You went in, give God's order. Yeah. Hallelujah. It ain't always easy to do what God wants you to do, but you had to do it. Which also things we speak not in words with man's wisdom, which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual things. What is spiritual things with spiritual things? There's only two spiritual things on this earth that God placed here besides us. One is the word, one is the spirit. When you have a voice, and we know this, we're mature enough to know this, that speaks to us and it's opposite what the word says, we've compared spiritual things with spiritual things and if there's a voice that speaks to us and it's opposite what the word says, we know we got the wrong spirit in operation talking to us right there because we have compared spiritual things. Come on now. The voice of the Holy Ghost will never go against himself because holy men of God spake as they were anointed by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He will not go against the word. So that... That brings an order in us on how to discern what's God and what's not God. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Now, when God speaks to you and he gives you something in the word and he tells you to do something, you're supposed to do what he tells you to do regardless of 
of what other people try to tell you what to do and not to do. That's God's order. Your order is to try to please people. How many likes to please people? All of us do. We like to please people. But when it comes to God, when it comes to this area right here, I can give them tea with all the sugar in it they want. (laughs) I can please them that way. I'll go get them a donut if they want one. Chocolate, no chocolate, feel, no feel. But when it comes to the Word of God, the one we got to please and not have an attitude with it, not be arrogant about it, is the Lord. That's the order of the Lord. That's the only way. That's the only way. Hallelujah. How many, if the Lord hadn't have touched you, you'd have lost your mind? You're looking at one right here. I was close. 1978, God touched me. He began to bring order, his order, into my life. Changed my whole life. It's a progressive thing. He's continually doing it. He's continually bringing us to the place of a hundredfold. I was in 30 so long. I was in the good will of God so long. And then I moved over in the acceptable will and thought I was still pleasing him. But he'll get you into that perfect will of God where one day you can say, I fought a good fight, I finished the course. I've kept the faith. There's a crown laid up in heaven and you're going to have people waiting on you up there that you don't even know that you had some kind of effect on them coming into the kingdom of God somebody was watching you when you didn't know it hallelujah see there's somebody watching me all the time (laughs) I know it let me read this I got to hurry I didn't mean to spend that much time on this which things we speak not in words, which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Now, I mean, I know there's a, a man's wisdom. I've heard some very wise people that were not Christians. They had learned through experience and through teaching great wisdom, but yet they were fools because they didn't believe there was a God. I'm talking about man's wisdom, which is, I'm talking about God's wisdom, which is, what is God's wisdom? It is the word of God imparted by the spirit of God, revealed and given understanding unto us of what God's saying. Now, some of y'all just like me, used to pick up the word and it was like Greek to you. I mean, I know the original was written in Greek, but it was the same. You couldn't understand it. But all of a sudden, as you studied, revelation began to come. Understanding began to come. And what was disorder in your life began to be replaced with the order of the Lord. Can I feel the anointing in here? Is this helping anybody? I pray, God, I pray when I'm going to minister because I say, Holy Spirit, please let me discern what you're doing or what you're wanting to do in a service. Please let me know where I can flow with you. We get the idea sometimes that the Holy Spirit's hipping us. And that's partly true, but you want to know the real truth? We're supposed to be assisting him. How do we assist him? Who do you want me to lay hands on? What do you want me to say? You give me a sermon, but you preach it. You give me a song, but you got to sing it. I'll be your voice. But it's you, Lord. How it took me a long time to get that in my head. Hallelujah. Let me read this. 
Not in the words of which man teacheth, but with the Holy Ghost teacheth. How many know he's a teacher? He's a teacher. Jesus said, I come in the flesh, and in the flesh, I can't handle teaching all these people. After I leave here, there are going to be so many of them. There are going to be so many of my children running around all over the world that some of these people don't even know exist. I'm going to have children going all over the world. I'm one person in the flesh. I can't teach them all. But I'm going to pray to the Father because it's his order and it's his plan for the comfort to come. And when the comfort to come, he's going to lead you into all truth. He's going to teach you glory to God. He's going to get on you sometimes. And I'm going to flow through you, hallelujah. And I'm going to teach other people. I'm going to give you the privilege of being used by me, hallelujah. And the teaching is going to go on. That's God's order. You say, what if somebody's not teachable? It won't come in their life. It will not come because they're not teachable. Why are they not teachable? Because they think they know everything. Raise your hand real quick and say, duh, I'm still learning. (laughs) Aren't you glad? I don't want to arrive. I want to finish product when I get out of here and say, you listen to me real good, son. Which things we speak of the words which man's wisdom teach, but with the Holy Ghost teach. I got to hurry up with this. Compare spiritual things to spirit. But the natural man, how many knows is a natural man? He don't receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolish. You've got to renew your mind, honey. You've got to work on that mind. That mind will rebel against you. That mind will try to take over your spiritual life. That mind will try to take over. I control my mind sometimes with my mouth because it's wanting to tell me I ain't healed when I'm healed. And I'll say, shut up. Shut up, mind. The Word of God says, by his stripes I'm healed. I'm walking in it. Glory to God. My body is walking in the order of the Lord. I shouldn't be here today. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But the natural man will say, not the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You got to be born again. Hallelujah. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. What does he mean he judges all things? He judges it by the word. He judges it by the word. This is God. This ain't God. This is the right spirit. This is the wrong spirit. This is right. This is wrong. I judge it. Well, why am I judged by no man? Because when I'm in the order of the Lord, I hear the voice of the Lord. It lines up with the word of God and the promises that God gives me about my life. And when I hear from God, no man can judge me on what I do. Raise your hand and say, when I hear from God, people can talk about me. They can say, I wonder why they're acting that way. I wonder why they're doing that right now. That don't seem right to be doing that right now. You raise your hand and say, hey, I done been judged by the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm in the will of God. I'm in the will of God. I'm doing what God told me to do. Hallelujah. I'm going to throw kisses to them that don't understand it. (laughs) I'm going to be sweet. But they're not going to put condemnation or guilt on me and they're not going to cause me to change to please them. And stay sweet in doing that. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, when you're doing something for God, people are going to talk about you. It's just, they're just going to talk about you. Some people are going to think you're crazy if, they, if it's spiritually discerned and they don't know God. And some people that know God will think you're crazy. You just got to love them, throw a kiss to them, and go and do what you got to do. Don't argue with them. Don't fight with them. Don't pull a knife on them. Don't pull, out your, don't pull out your concealed weapon permit and say, you better look out, buddy. 
Don't do that. Just be nice to them and do what the Lord told you to do. How many of y'all, the Lord ever told you to do something and everybody talked about you? Raise your hand. They will. They will. You just got to accept that. They mean well. How many of y'all talked about somebody when you need to understand what they're doing? <laughs> See, this is a human as they are. They're all that way. We're talking when we should be listening. And sometimes we're listening when we should be talking. But he that spirits judge all things, yet him himself is not judged. Who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But well, we have the mind of Christ. You know, people told me they meant well. When I, got, when I became fanatical, when I, became, I got a passion for Jesus, Jeanette and I did, we, we just went, just, I mean, she always lived right, you know. I was in and out. But when God touched me in 1978, I, be so, I became so radical that some people told me, said, you know, I've known somebody do what you did and they lost their mind. <laughs> and I got to reading the scriptures, you know. And I said, well, glory to God, I lost my mind. I'm glad I lost it because now I what? I got the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's, let's look at this. How many know it's a process that you don't ever stop? If you stop, that crud will come back in your mind. Your flesh will want to take back over. And I'll tell you, within 24 hours sometimes, you don't have to wait no two weeks. That old man can raise up real quick. You've got to keep putting him down. How do you put him down? The word and, the, and prayer. The spirit's willing, but willing, but what? Flesh is weak. Let me have scriptures right quick. We hit these right quick in, a, in Ephesians, and I want to give you some others if, 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 I can, if I can find it here. Has this helped anybody? That's a weak amen, I tell you. I don't know. I don't believe we have nobody tonight, Lord. <laughs> I know he's helping you. Word's always good. Hallelujah. I saw that tummy uh, Bates, I think it was last night, night before last. That guy can't preach for singing. He got the anointing on him, gets to preach, and the next thing you know, he's singing. He's been playing the piano since he's five years old and singing. I just love to see people like that. They amaze me. It motivates me. I hate to be around dead people. <laughs> you can't even collect any money out of dead people. Yeah, went to a mortuary and tried to, hey, buddy, you owe me some money. What are you die on me for? <laughs> you can't get them out of dead people. You can't get nothing out of dead people. They don't believe in nothing. They don't say nothing. Well, you know what the Lord done for me yesterday? What? <laughs> I don't talk to them kind of people no more. If I'm going to talk to somebody, I'm going to talk to somebody that celebrates what I just told them. He's going to say, hey, glory to God, I felt that. <laughs> Woo, glory. <laughs> mm. They'll try to try. They, they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll try to throw water on your parade, quench your fire. Well, I know what he's preaching right, but it don't work for me. Bless God. <laughs> Say it work for anybody. Crab Bible. Say that with me. It'll work for anybody if you put it to work. There's an order God wants to put in your life. Let me read this. I'm going to read a couple of things right quick and we go. Ephesians 4, 22. This is the way you do it. That you put off concerning the former conversation or lifestyle. 
conduct. The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed, how? In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It's, it's the way the order, it's the way order comes into your life. I got, I got some preaching stuff over here. This is so good. I couldn't wait to get there, but I can't get there tonight. Look at, look at, um, I, I'm going I'm to show you what happens to a lot of Christians. And you know this. And we're going to look at Romans 12. Look at Mark 4, if you will. The stages, if, if, if the devil can't get you in one stage, he's going to, he, he, and you grow and, 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 and he'll come and try, he'll, he'll come and he, he'll try to stop you in your growth. He'll, he'll see something happening there. If he can't get you, he get, you know, it's, it's a parable of the sower and the, and the seed and everything. And, and, and it talks about the stony ground, you know, they ain't got no root. That ain't good English, is it? They use that in Cajun country. Yeah. Yeah, ain't. Ain't's a word. Yeah, ain't. It means ain't not. Ain't not. Mm-hmm. And they have no root in them. So they ain't got no root. So they endure for a while. Ain't got no root. No root. And then they got the thorns. Here's the thorns. I mean, they got the stony ground up there, and immediately the word, the, the, the devil comes and gets it. He, he don't want order to come in your life. He, he, want, he wants you to keep on going through just the living in, the, in, a, in a defeated discouraged despair. What, what was that on he haw I can't ever get that right. Agony. Oh, <laughs> How many of y'all ever been there? You had a pity party and nobody come. You was the only one there just trying to entertain yourself. I don't like them pity parties. I don't want to go there. You know, I have the opportunity to get on them and I keep my mouth shut. I refuse to participate. Because it's dead stuff. It ain't, ain't heavy. But see, then he, he, gets, he tries to get the root and, and the thorns and, and then he, with the thorns he gets, and the cares of, look at verse 19, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in they have to be, the door has to be opened. They have to be permitted to come in. We, we lose our passion when, and, and we, we open the door and, 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 and these things come in. That's where most of the church in America is. And, and the word, it chokes the word, it chokes the word, and the word becomes unfruitful because the person begins to harden against God even though they've got the lingo and all the religious stuff going on. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, eats them alive. Now, how many know there's a way of getting provision? God's got an order. Money will come to you. Kingdom laws. You don't, you don't have to lust after this. Seek first God's order, God's kingdom, God's government. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How about it, teacher? And all these things that the world is lusting after, seeking after, God will cause them to catch you and overtake you and come on you. And these are they which are sown on the good ground, and such as hear the word. Ever say, hear the word, and receive it, and bring it forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. When you begin to receive, when you begin to hear and receive the word of God, and put it in practice in your life, meditate on it, live by it, let the Holy Spirit lead you by it, you begin to produce fruit. Now, somebody on television the other day says the fruit of the Spirit that you're producing. No, you produce that when you get born again. You don't have 30-fold of the fruit of the Spirit or 60-fold of the fruit of the Spirit or 100-fold. That fruit grows on one tree. God, I'm trying to close. 
You don't pick and choose the fruit. All that fruit right there grows on one tree. It grows on the born again new nature. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That's the order of God. Whew. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That word faith is faithfulness. Hallelujah. Then you begin to produce fruit. That's what God wants. You cannot produce fruit in chaos. Fruit comes when the word is not choked but released to be active and influential in our lives to change our thinking, our conduct. I'm trying to close. Look at John 15, please. I had some of God's order in my life, but as I seek the Lord and as I grow in the Lord, you can get to the place of purpose where you have revelation of what your purpose is. And God begins to move you in the fulfillment of what you was born for. Thirty, sixty, hundredfold. I used to try to please God by what I did, but now I please God with my obedience. John 15, look at this. There are stages of fruit in our life. John 15. I got to hurry. I know. Look at somebody says five after seven in Dallas. <laughs> it's five after nine in Santo Domingo. I don't know what time it is in London. It could be half past 12. In Italy, it's about to five o'clock. It's about the time we eat the pizza. In Cajun country, it's a boat. <laughs> it's about two hours behind us. That's an Irish and Cajun mixed. <laughs> Y'all, what is that song they sing? What does that mean? Blonde-headed lady. It's a blonde-headed lady. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with God's order. <laughs> She's eating them crawdads and stuff, man. This is a New Orleans girl. I love cultures, don't you? I love nations. I, I just love people. I, I love to see the difference in all of us. It, we're crazy. All of us are crazy. All of us is a little wacko, you know. We eat stuff other people don't eat, and they eat stuff we don't eat, and they dress different than us. And I love the way God made us different, don't you? Hallelujah. Let me read this. We got to go. Jesus said in verse 1, I'm the true vine, my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges the, and he bringeth forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except that it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. You got three levels of fruit right there. Fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. Through the word, we find the purpose and the will and the mind of God through our relationship and the word and the spirit, that order becomes, it begins to enter into our life and God brings us to the place of purpose that we were born for. Don't shout me down. Amen. There are stages in that. 30, 60, 100 fold. 
Look at Romans 12. We'll go on this one. I can't get in all that. I can't help I've got that teaching anointing on me. Tonight I've got the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. You say, well, you're preaching too long. I know, but if you don't let me get this delivered, Jeanette will have to stay up till midnight. <laughs> Honestly. And I'll still be going. How many know when God puts something in you, it just swells up, just... You just hope and pray it's one of those nights where it's a short one. <laughs> what I tell you is, is this helping anybody? Is, I'm a child of God. I got the mind of Christ. Praise God. I'm walking in the order of the Lord. You say, well, a terrorist just blow your car up. Well, praise God. God will give me a better one. Come on now. Most people say, well, I just filled it up with gas. I just had the oil changed up, God. <laughs> How many know God can give you all the gas? He, he can give you the oil. He can give you all of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> we having a good time tonight. Amy. Woo! What did, the, what did that woman say? To blow him, what? How you go again? I like that. How you go again? There? Could you do it again for me? I bet you Jesse sings that every time he goes to that chicken place. What is that chicken place he likes? Popeyes. I can't find one of them places. One of those places to save my life. A city that don't have a Popeyes ain't got no order. I had to find one. They say the one in Augusta. I ain't never ate that. They advertise those crowdad, crowdads, uh, crawfish on television one night. I got the craving that so bad. I got the craving. You asked Jeanette. I got the craving that. I said, man, I'd drive somewhere. If I knew where there was one of those places, well, they should, it should be outlawed. That they couldn't show something like that unless they can provide it in the city where they're showing it. <laughs> That's the trouble with cable television. <laughs> at somebody and say, I ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> Got the mind of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Ha! Throw all that worry on that big blown woman. <laughs> that big blown woman. Just shoo off. <laughs> Let her worry about it. <laughs> Do you know this woman right here was dying? Joy was dying. I mean, she's on her last leg here. Benny Hinn came to town. I called her. I said, Joy, I'll come by and get you. Jeanette and I come by and get you. She said, no, I'm going to ride my scooter up there. And I'm, on, I'm not going to ride it home. I'm going to push it home. I'm sitting up on the platform up there, and the power of God's moving. And they call the line the healing line. I look, she's the first one in the line, man. And she's on that stage jumping and a hollering and a shouting. She got healed. She pushed that thing home. She pushed that wheelchair home. God brought his order into her physical body. Glory to God. Look at some of us say, sickness is out of order for me. It's not part of God's purpose for me. Healing and health. Sound mind that don't worry about everything. That's not filled with anxiety. I can only do that through God because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But I, I've learned how to crucify the flesh. It's through the power of the word and the, and the teaching of the Holy Ghost, the revelation. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. I feel the anointing in this place. Hallelujah. Let me read this. We'll go. No, we won't go. We're going to pray. There's so much faith in here right now. I'm going to tell you, I, I felt it a while ago. There's so much faith in here right now. I, 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 I believe I could say it without... 
being wrong at all right now. I believe the gift of faith is in manifestation in this place tonight. I believe it has been here waiting for the word of God to go forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. I'm going to read this scripture, Lord, and then we're going to pray. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, I pray for the internet audience. I pray right now, God, that there be just miracles, just healings, just popping all over these computers. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that worry be leaving. Oh, hallelujah. Doesn't have the right place in the mind of a person that's got the order of the Lord in their mind. God, let faith arise in your enemies and their enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. 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 Let me read this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, there's something lost people can't have. By the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My body is a living sacrifice. I give it to God. I gave it to God last night. I said, Lord, I... I, I give you every part of me. I give you my body. I do this all the time. I give you my mind. I give you everything. I give you every part of you. I don't want my will. I'm not asking for anything special. Lord, I just give myself to you. And if you have something you want me to do, you just tell me. I'll do it. Hallelujah. I belong to you, Lord. I ask you, though, Lord, I ask you to heal people in our meetings. I ask you, Lord, to do miracles in our meetings. I ask you, Lord, to manifest yourself with a gift of faith, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing. I ask you, Lord, to manifest yourself with a word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirit. I ask you, Lord, to manifest yourself, uh, Lord, with a t- diverse tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. And, Lord, if there be any loss there, let them see your power and your glory and let them be so saved, Lord, that they become radical, hallelujah, that they never back up. Glory to God. Shut all on my son. Woo! There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. We have only tasted of a full course meal that God has set the table and prepared for us that love him. Woo! We've just tasted a little bit of it. Mmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read this. Thank you, Jesus. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You know what that means? That word right there. You set yourself apart for the service of God, not for the devil, not for your flesh, but the for the purpose, the mind of God, the order of God's government. I set myself aside. God said, look at that holy child right there. He's washed in the blood. He's the righteousness of Christ. And he has set himself aside for my service. You want God to do something for you? Give yourself to him. You ain't seen nothing. Hallelujah. Let me read this. It's it's acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world. Boy, they got all these. (laughs) Well, I ain't going there. I guess I will a little bit. (laughs) People conforming to the world and say, I'm a Taylor Christian. I'm a Christian. <laughs> you may have some problems as a Christian that you still need some work in the area. 
But if you conform to this world, you're not in the kingdom. When you get saved, you've got to begin this process of renewing your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing your mind metamorphosis like a beautiful butterfly that comes from a little worm. Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, everybody say, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Fruit, more fruit, much fruit, perfect will, purpose, God's order for your life. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Here I am, use me. I dare you to say it. I dare you to raise your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. This is my reasonable service, God. Hallelujah. I die to self. I give myself to you. He says, son, I take the responsibility of taking care of you. When you get on an airplane, you're the cause of protection of everybody else on there. Because when I send you somewhere, I take care of you. When I send you somewhere, I pay the bill. I take care of the whole thing. God, it takes worry off of me. Takes anxiety off of me. The Lord going to take care of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody that needs a touch in their body, I want you to come up here tonight. And I want to pray for those on the internet before you come. Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch these people. They're so precious to us. Lord, we don't know who they are. They see us. We don't see them. But you know who they are because you've caused them to click on to this web. God, I want you to bless them like you've never blessed them before. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, in every way, Lord. Touch them. Put a passion in them. God, if they already got that, put a burden on them to pray for us that we get more of you, that we get more radical because we're going to see a harvest, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you for watching. Bless you. We welcome you so much here. Liberty Ministries Church International, it's an honor to have you watching us over the Internet. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you. Hallelujah. If you got sick.